What if I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world? And that you are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. Alexa, shut the music off. Welcome to the awakening world. Alexa, go home. Alexa. Good evening, everybody. I am your host for The Awakening World. I'm Love Coach Scott Thomas, and I want to welcome everybody who's watching. I see a lot of our dear friends that are already here in the Zoom room with us, and tonight's going to be a really wonderful night, a chance to interact a lot with two of my favorite people that I'm learning so much from. Pato and Antoinette are in the house, and um, they just got back from multiple trips to Africa. Uh, they were just in the UK, came home two nights ago, and they've got so much to share with us. So uh, they are my co-pilots for the evening. I'm gonna pretty much turn the show over to them. They've got a lot to share. But before we get to that, I want to um, invite people to come and join us. And I wanna acknowledge, thank you, John and Summer Raymer, who were on this show last night. They get us out to over a hundred Facebook groups and pages through the sign network. So thank you, John and Summer. And for those of you who are watching on Facebook, come on in and join us. It's really easy to do that. Just go to globalpeacetribe.com, globalpeacetribe.com and register. You'll see a little register button right down here and that will take you to our registration page. You know, we do three or more shows every week. Um, uh, so for example, last night, we had Chief Phil, John and Summer on, and we talked all about enlightening our way together, whatever that looks like, and ended up having some amazing uh, surprise guests. Of course, this is tonight's show, all about the spirit of Ubuntu. And we're gonna hear about it from Pato and Antoinette. We have beautiful videos from Desmond Tutu and Obama, uh, talking about this, and some beautiful music videos, including Quajo and Pato. And then tomorrow, it's up close and personal with our dear beloved friends, the Twin Ray, really asking them all the questions people have wanted to know about this very unique couple. For me, it's pretty amazing. I'm with like my three favorite couples. Last night, John and Summer. Tonight, Pato and Antoinette. Tomorrow, the Twin Ray. I just realized that. That's pretty cool. I feel blessed. I also feel blessed to see we've got friends from all over. We've got people in Norway, Ecuador, El Salvador, New York, the uh, United Kingdom, uh, the Pacific Northwest, Virginia, uh, Tucson, Arizona. It's really beautiful to have all of you with us. So we're going to go right into um, a really beautiful video that kind of, I think, usually, you know, we always start with music. Oftentimes we'll start with music from Omushar or one of our um, you know, guest musical artists. Well, this is a video from our very beloved Pato, who's right here with us. And I think it's a great way to start the show. Um, so let's all go to Africa together.
Yes, it's part of Bantan passing through With me brethren, I'll do Oh, Heavenly Father, we worship you for All of the wonderful things you do I'm sending out, sending out prayers for my brothers and my sisters, yeah. Sending out, sending out prayers for Mama Africa. to uh, go to gallery view let's all give some twinkling that was amazing wasn't it beautiful <laughs> <laughs> just fabulous wow mm. well here they are pato and antoinette fresh from multiple trips to africa and the uk yes so tell us a little bit about what what you're doing and what this evening is all about i'll let you go first <laughs> um Okay, well, what we're doing this evening is we are presenting to the, the viewers and our family, our global family, um, an update of what we have been doing um, over the past three months with our three phases of multiple trips to Africa. And um, we just got back from the UK after a week of visiting family. Um, so we, we, we're jet lagged, um, and, but we're getting some rest right now and we're, we're, we're very excited and, um, really happy to do this show with you, Scott, and to present, um, the Ubuntu mission update to, to everyone on this show. Mm -hmm. uh, 
we'll also be featuring um, um, Kudzai and um, Ansa, our camera crew from Zimbabwe. We'll also be talking to um, Kwajo Spiri, and we'll also be featuring some amazing music from Omar Shah. Beautiful. You know, <laughs> the awakening world is all about coming into oneness. And I did not know the word Ubuntu until you introduced it to me. And so over the last few days, I've been kind of uh, scrolling and looking and, and all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, it's like the word in Africa. It is like the word. And it, as I listened to Obama and Desmond Tutu and other people talking about what it means, I realized it's, it's probably as important a word as there is on the entire planet because it does sum up what I think all the people on this show watching believe and are feeling. Um, and you're making a documentary about it. Um, so um, I think uh, let's, let's take a look at what uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu has to say about this powerful word. Okay. Let me tell you, we, we have something in, in our African uh, community, something that is very difficult to put into English. It is, it is called Ubuntu, Ubuntu. Ubuntu is the essence of being human. And it says, a solitary human being is a contradiction in terms. I can't be a human being on my lonesome. I wouldn't know how to speak as a human being. I wouldn't know how to think as a human being. I wouldn't know how to walk as a human being. I have to learn from other human beings how to be human. And so Ubuntu, Ubuntu says, my humanity is bound up in yours. I am only because you are. And, and we, we then say, a person is a person through other persons. And that we, we, we need this communal harmony if we are going to survive at all. And anger and revenge and bitterness are corrosive of this harmony. And, and you, 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 you know it, you've, you've experienced how when, when you are really angry with someone, it does something to your tam-tam. <laughs> uh, and and, and you, it does something to your, to your blood pressure. So, forgiving, forgiving is actually not <coughs> being altruistic. You are not being nice to the other guy. When you forgive, you are actually being nice to yourself. Forgiving, forgiving, apart from anything else, is good for your health. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Oh. And I love that. So it's like the understanding that we are so, we can, what is said, you can only be a human by learning how to be a human through other humans. We need each other. And we are so intricately connected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, and also too, uh, the reason why um, we felt it was so important, especially at this time right now, Right when we came home from, um, from our, all of our trips, because we had been touring before, besides Africa, we were also doing our musical touring in and in out, between. in between. As soon as we got home from Africa, it was like back out again. We were touring in Florida. We were touring in Hawaii. 
We were touring in Mexico and touring everywhere else. And California, there was no time for anything. And then for these last two days, it's like I finally had two days in our own home. And for the first time, I was actually able to watch the TV. And I actually watched this documentary called Generation Wealth on Prime. If you haven't seen it, I'm telling everybody go out and watch this film because it's really the reason why we had to go and shoot this uh, documentary called Ubuntu. Because the way that that humanity is progressing forward in the age of consumerism, in the age of materialism, in the age of, of the selfish, you know, capitalism, the unfettered, all these different things. It's like you can sit there and see like the demise of humanity. And it's like, what can we actually do that can actually change things? And after our, our experiences and actually finding this trip and talking to these individuals and seeing all these amazing things, it's like, yes, this philosophy can change the world. This philosophy can change humanity. It's not just for Africa. It is something that could change for the rest of us. It's like hum humanity is either going to rise up and progress, like our native brothers and indigenous people have been saying, we can either go in two directions, this way towards light and life, or like down the tubes. And it's like this philosophy is, I believe, is the ultimate philosophy, which is also the good news, which is also the golden rule, which is also a lot of different philosophies. We just have a lot of different names. But if this is a quick and easy way, Ubuntu, then let's call it what it is, Ubuntu. You know, already um, I'm just delighted with the start of the show and so many of the comments coming into our chat box. Um, so I just want to acknowledge there's a lot of beautiful comments coming in from people that are already deeply touched by Pato's video, by what Desmond Tudu has to say, by what you both have had to say in this the spirit of this, it's, um, it's very, very, very beautiful. Um, I'm just going to read a couple of the comments. And everybody, I appreciate every comment. I can't read them all, but I'm going to read a few that just jump out. Um, Dia Therese writes, maximum blessings. Thank you, Scott, for replays. I will be playing this show over and over. I love it. Um, uh, uh, and... Uh, Mark is asking, what's the name of the film that you just mentioned? I'll put it in the chat box. What's the name of it? It's called Generation Wealth. And it was on Amazon Prime. And the director, which is a filmmaker, is also a photographer. Her name is Lauren Greenfield. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to find the link and drop it in there. I mean, it's amazing. Everybody should watch this. <laughs> Everybody should watch this. And then come and watch our documentary. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, well, while you all kind of catch up on some of the comments in the chat box and put in more, um, you've all seen Quajo. He's been on this show a few times. You know, Quajo was just on a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Kristen Hoffman, every two months, does a show with her artists catalyzing evolution. And Quajo actually was with us live, but he's in Ghana, and right now it's the middle of the night there. So, um, but we're going to see a beautiful video that he and Pato and Antoinette. Did. Um, I believe Antoinette, you directed this video. We uh, both did. Yeah. And yeah, we both did. We both are, are directing. We were out there because Quadro met Pato online on Facebook, actually. Okay. And then, so you want to tell us? Yeah. Right. Qu Quadro and me connected on Facebook. I found out that Quadro was a fellow reader of the Urantia book and, <laughs> and an outstanding musician. He said he would love to record with me one day. And I said to him, I'm booking my flight. So <laughs> me and Antoinette agreed to go to Ghana to host a spiritual conference, um, to meet Kwajo, to ho host a spiritual conference in Ghana where we brought Christians, Muslims, Urantia book readers, and atheists together at a beautiful arena um, a and, Rasta Beach Resort. And, and Rastafarians. <laughs> and it was an amazing, amazing gathering. Um, during that time, we also went into the hills of Ghana and um, went into a very dense forest and filmed much of the video on, up there and on the beach and um, wrote the song together. Um, yeah, Quadro prepared the song and then I put my lyrics and then Antoinette participated. 
and we just became friends. Um, this was a few years ago. This was way, this is 2015, 2014. And, and since then, we've visited them in Ghana maybe three times. Four or five we've, times. We've, we've hosted <laughs> conferences over there. And um, Kwajo has become one of our closest friends. Yeah, oh. he's dynamic, he's spiritual, he's intelligent. He's an engineer. I mean, there, there's a lot of fascinating things about Kwajo. Very amazing. So this is our song called um, Light Up the One Love. All right, <laughs> let's take a look. One Love. It's what you're hearing yeah. Better yet Let it sink deep into the soul It's medicine It's healing for the soul And please never forget it yeah. Light up the one law Be boldly representing Hope you get it yeah. Moving to the higher frequencies uh. My people back home And people living overseas The generation is right Revelation is now uh. The fatherhood of God The brotherhood of man Time To look for the crystallized religions Light up the soul fire Disconnect the soul wire Transcend the ego tire uh. Moving to the higher Chambers of the mind uh. Putting through one chart of orders We stand to the vision The mission to occupy the world with true religion Looking for ministers about a legion You storm the four corners of the four quarters of the four waters Reaching out to the core prophets of the headquarters The churches and the street gangsters Blessing wishing for the nation Reaching out for you in the nation Giving out to the nation Light up the one Lord Blessing wishing for the nation Reaching out for you in the nation Yes, we're calling all just soldiers, give me a peace sign If you dip on the front line from a long time, yaga yo Give me a peace sign as we cry Peace on earth and goodwill to all mankind it up. We have to light up the one load it up. Cause the whole we are one blood it up. And we come from the same mud Children of the same God It's a revelation For the new generation So get ready for higher education What was hidden from the wise and the prudent Now revealed to the world It's a revelation For the new generation Prepare your mind for your deeper medi mm. Aspire to a higher hill and be another busy church and get ready right you know. Blessing wishing for the nation, reaching out for you in the nation. 
giving out to the nation. Light up the one Lord. Blessing wishing for the nation. Reaching out for you in the nation. Giving out to the nation. Light up the one Lord. Respect. Respect. North, South, East, and the West. Filmed in Ghana, lighting by God. I hope everybody knows that. Lighting <laughs> by God. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Uh, hey, everybody, I'm going to go to gallery view. Let's all give them this. Here we go. <laughs> lighting up the nation. Nice one. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was really, really fun. How does, how do, what are the steps to create a video like that? Like, you write the music track first, add the lyrics. Then once you know what the lyrics are, do you create a shot, a shot sheet um, to 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 get all your shots to edit? How do you? How do you That's a good idea. A shot sheet. <laughs> well, no, with this particular video, no, we didn't. We do just that. winged it. <laughs> um, what happened with this particular song? Quadro Spiri wrote the song and left some spaces for us. Mm -hmm. We we fill those spaces with our lyrical content. And then um, I'm not sure, did you play music on this one as well? No, all yes, right. so did all the music on this. If, if the music isn't finished, Antoinette would normally put some music and I would put the lyrics, but the music was kind of done on this one. So I put the lyrical content, Antoinette put the backing vocals and then we sent him the final recording. Mm -hmm. And then when we flew over there, because there's actually two versions to this video. Mm -hmm. There's one that shot in the jungle and one that shot on, on the, the beach. beach. Uh -huh. <laughs> and um, because we had so much footage that I couldn't get it all into one video. So I said, I'm just going to do two separate videos. So there's this version and there's another one that is more themed around the Arantia circles and um, symbology and, book, yeah. and, and, the, and the ocean. Um, but this one is very powerful too. And so all we did was we just took our cameras mm. um, and me and Antoinette actually were responsible for filming the whole thing. Mm. And we just took our cameras up to the jungle and we just started shooting and all the extra people that you see in the video, they just turned up. <laughs> they were just unseen. We saw us filming. that we just saw randomly. <laughs> randomly and we just said, come and join us. Yeah, it's like, do you guys want to be in the video? And They're so, like, <laughs> so they just joined us. There was no real planning mm -hmm. on how it was going to be. But, you know, we all I know is I, when I saw the helicopter, I just said the helicopter has got to be in the shot. Yeah, that was a very And nice. then when I saw the trees, I was like, we got to shoot by the trees. I said, that's the money shot. We got to put the camera down there. We're just winging everything. <laughs> Well, you you wing, you give good wing. Uh, <laughs> you give, give good wing. Well, um, and now thank you for helping because Quajo, when he showed this video, he showed the one with the beach. And okay. That, when I saw this, I was like, wait a minute. So, so I've seen the one with the beach and we've had it on, on one of these shows. So, well, speaking of Quajo, he was so excited that we were doing an entire show dedicated to the two of you. And so um, here is uh, a pre-record that I did with him just two days ago. Actually, yesterday. We did it yesterday. So here's what Quajo has to say, uh, a message for and about Pato and Antoinette. Here we go. Quajo coming all the way from Ghana. And um, Quajo, first of all, thank you for taking some time to be with us. Uh, we've you, watched sir. your video. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. as always. Mm -hmm. What does the spirit? What does the spirit of Ubuntu mean to you? Thank you, thank you so much, Scott, for this opportunity to you know say a few words about this very important you know uh, subject and word you know African word. Ubuntu Ubuntu means a lot. You know Ubuntu was a word that came into being very long time ago. I mean by my ancestors, my African ancestors. And, 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 and 
any time I try to ponder or think deeply into this word, it gives me chills because it makes me realize a lot of things which once upon a time, you know, our ancestors knew, but over a period of time, you know, has been dormant for a while. But in recent times or in recent years, we are beginning to rediscover the meaning of this all important and deep, you know, phrase or word, Ubuntu. Ubuntu simply means uh, I exist because you are or you exist because I am. So in actual fact, Ubuntu is trying to make humanity recognize the oneness of all things. And humanity is trying to make, make uh, Ubuntu is trying to remind us of the fact that uh, everything is interconnected one way or the other. All of creation, you know, be it creation on the on the physical level or on the mental level or on the spiritual level, everything is interconnected, you know, and so all is one. And so what you see out there mostly is a reflection of yourself. And so what happens to you normally is what you have actually thrown into the universe and then it comes back to you. So you throw your thoughts out there and then it comes back to you and then and then and then it is actioned in your life. So so Ubuntu and you see this is what gives me the the chills that our 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 ancestors were able to reason to such an extent that they came to the realization of this reality of oneness and chose to evolve or to bring out a word which describes this because if you want to describe how the universe operates or if you want to de describe the oneness of of all of, of all things you can only come up with adjectives to describe it you know like if you want to describe god you you always will, will come up with adjectives because you are trying to describe an infinite being with finite words you cannot describe an infinite reality with 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 with, with words pertaining to finitude so our ancestors thought of coming up with a word that is so heavy, so deep, so reflective enough to describe infinity or to describe the oneness of all things. So they came up with the word Ubuntu. And I haven't found in any language existing on earth today which tries as much as possible to describe in depthly, you know, the oneness of all things, or they try to, to bring out a word to describe the, the, the infinite nature of God or the infinite nature of reality or how everything is intertwined into one. So one, one aspect of Ubuntu that we can, we can look at is that uh, 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 whatever I do to you, I do to myself. You know? And I try to say this on my music a lot. I mean, if you listen to my albums or, or on many of the music I've actually produced or you know, come out with, I, I try to make this concept known a lot because I feel it's an all important concept which every human being should get to know that all is one and, and that's what you actually do to another you are doing to yourself. So you are actually re reflecting or projecting your, your thoughts out there and you are seeing your movie, but in actual fact, everything is in here. So what I do to you, I do to, to myself, my brother and stuff like that. If, if, if you listen to my lyrics, you know, I, I keep repeating this a lot because I, I know how very important this 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 fundamental reality is and if you get it right everything seems to fall in place in your your life so ubuntu means a lot to me because it cannot even be defined you know so when we are when we are uh, giving the meaning of ubuntu we keep it very very short you know we 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 just say that you are because i am i am because we, you are and in this simple phrase everything covers around it you know you know, the, the oneness is the centrality and all other concepts of life, all other concepts in the cosmos, all other concepts in the universe exist or revolves around this oneness of all things. So that is how deep we can go with, with the word Ubuntu, you know, Ubuntu, universality of things, the communalism of things, that we, are, we, we, we should live in community, we should be unified, we should have mankind government, we should see ourselves as one. We should let the golden rule apply to all things. You know, that, that is one, one aspect, you know, like the, the golden rule should apply to all things. If we live, if, if this world achieves, you know, living based on the golden rule, then the principles of Ubuntu are actually coming into place. So it can get deeper and deeper and deeper. We can talk all day about Ubuntu and 
because it is just like talking about God or trying to define God. We can go to the farthest extent and we can never finish, you know, exhausting talking about that reality or concept. That is what Ubuntu actually is to me. You know, it is it is very, very deep and the world should begin to embrace Ubuntu because that is what the world needs to actually, you know, be on its grounds to ensure peace, to, to let peace prevail, you know, to, to let goodwill and love prevail. We must understand the concept of Ubuntu, imbibe it for this world to actually find, you know, its firm grounds of love, of truth, of beauty, of goodness. So yes, Ubuntu. I can keep going on and on and on, but I believe you, you get my drift. <laughs> well, I, I, it's beautiful because what you're saying is what the world needs, you know, mm -hmm. um, and we do need to really love by seeing ourself in all other beings and That's see right. all other beings within ourself. And Absolutely. so I, I love that. And it is true. Every video I've seen of yours, and I think I've seen four or five of them now, uh -huh. they all have that spirit of love. And yes. now I understand yes. the spirit yes. of Ubuntu in there. And now, of, of course, course. Um, uh, tonight, the show that you're airing on right now, uh, Pato mm -hmm. and Antoinette are my co-hosts. They're uh -huh. doing this beautiful documentary about the spirit of Ubuntu, they're watching what you're about to say. What um, what do you have to say about working with Pato and Antoinette? How do they embody the spirit of Ubuntu for you? Ah, Pato, Pato and Antoinette are actually good, good representations, or or you know, they are, they are very good representation uh, re representation of the word Ubuntu. I mean, whoever chose them to embark on this documentary have done a great job. I mean, he has seen the right pair to actually go around and looking at the fact that they have African roots and the word is an African word, you know, yes, they are, they are, they are the best couple or the best pair to actually, uh, you know, make this documentary come to life. Pato and Antoinette have been great. I mean, from day one, ever since, you know, I met them, the, the, the kind of spirit, you know, they have, they have exhibited in, in their work is amazing. You know, they, but they are, they are, they are some of the most lovely people you can work with. And some of the most industrious people you can actually work with. They are very hardworking. Pato and 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 Antoinette are the definition of love in action. You know, yes, they are. They are a very good good uh, example of love in action. And Pato is all about action. Pato always want to be on the field. Always want to hit the road. Always want to be on the streets. You know, spreading the good vibes and the good cheer. You know, Pato is is also an. an a very good um if you listen to his music he's also a very good ambassador of the word ubuntu you know Pato spreads the oneness Pato spreads the love Pato always wants to bring to together communalism want to bring together you know oneness it has been great we have worked in ghana i've worked with them in ethiopia and all these places have been fantastic we have done amazing work together we have a beautiful video together and if you watch like the video, it is all love, love, and cheers. You know, when they came to Ghana, everyone loved them. They were on the streets of Ghana and people they have never met before, people they hardly knew, people they, they, they never knew where they came from, found them, identified them, and took them home. You know, they, they, they actually showed them a lot of love. They, they made genuine friends, which they had before never met. You know, that, that should tell you, you know, the, the, the big heart this, this, this couple has, you know, for the work like they, 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 act, they actually do. So it's been love from day one. It's been great. I love their charisma. I love, I love you know, how industrious they are, how they, they put a lot of seriousness into whatever they do and, and how they, they are able to entertain everyone. You know, they, they, are, they, are, they are able to bring everyone into the picture. You know, say like irrespective of your background. I mean, they have they have friends in Ghana who are Muslims. You know, lo looking at their backgrounds, you know, you may think they wouldn't want to identify with people from other sects or religion, but no, they have such such a, a diversified view of the world. They have such broad mindedness that they are able to entertain people from all culture, from all races, from from all beliefs, from all faith. You know, what I'm saying, aha. Uh -huh. And, 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 and I think it is partly due to their, their, their spiritual journey. Their spiritual journey has taken them to places that has opened up their hearts to be able to bring everyone in, 
to be able to see them, them themselves in all kinds of, of people you know i see i see aspects of my personal journey in them as well because if if i look at myself over the past few decades you know i have grown more outward i have grown more liberal i have learned to open up to all i've learned to see myself even an evil person so that i can i can extend or project love onto like this person uh -huh. Pato and Antoinette have been able to get to such levels to, that they are able to bring everyone in they are able to show love they are able to 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 entertain all kinds of of beings and you know personalities out there you know so so Beautiful. when they are actually on the field and they are working you will love them because 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 of how they open up you know, to receive every, receive everybody, everybody with such warmness and kindness. So yes, that's they are such an awful thing. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that is absolutely my experience as well. And awesome. um, Parzo, thank you so much for your time. I just want to remind everybody that he's got a great YouTube channel where you can get uh, find his albums and find a wonderful documentary. Um, and so everybody is Quajo Spiri, K-W-A-D-J-O, and then his second name, S-P-I-R-I. And of course, we've just seen two of your videos, Quajo. So awesome. thank you so much for taking some time to be with us. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So that's, um, that's Spiri, like Siri. <laughs> Quajo Spiri like Siri. And that very first video that you showed up on that playlist of I am, that's actually my ringtone. It's a powerful affirmation. When you check out the words of that video, I mean, of, of that song, it's a powerful affirmation. And, and it's my ringtone. So every time I hear it, it's just like giving me powerful affirmations. And that day we shot the video was the hellish day because it took us like 12 hours to actually get to the beach <laughs> to shoot that video which i shot with my gopro <laughs> you know my hand and everything it's, it's pretty good but that was very touching from him and i want to say you know the guy that he's talking about that saw us in the street because i i caught it on film it's in the very first video that we shot of mohammed aladu um the mom prayers for mama africa i'm walking down the street with my gopro so all that stuff you see walking down the street, and that's when this guy stops me on the street and he says, Pato and Antoinette. He goes, I follow you guys on Facebook. And I'm like, get the hell out of here. I mean, do you see how many people is on the streets in Accra, Ghana? I mean, it's like, there's so many people. And this dude is just stops me in the middle of the street. There's literally thousands of people on the street and he stops me on the street and he says, it's Pato and Antoinette. So we took him along with us. We invite him back to the hotel and we threw him in the music video. And we've been friends with him ever since. You know, I taught his son how to swim. <laughs> he makes bracelets for us and everything. His name is Bright. He's awesome. So um, I just wanted to share something um, <clears throat> um, regarding um, uh, my definition of Ubuntu. And um, um, some people may or may not know, but me and Antoinette were nominated as ambassadors of the Golden Rule by Ambassador Musi in Ethiopia for the United Religions Initiative. So we are officially now um, ambassadors of the Golden Rule. And um, we are also ministers um, and ambassadors of the good news you know, that we're all God's children, brothers and sisters. We also promote namaste. Um, we, we understand that there is a spark of divinity in everyone. And that the more we get in touch with our own spark of divinity within ourselves, is the more we begin to recognize that same spark of divinity within every other person that we come into contact with. And, um, with these three beautiful concepts, once we embarked on the Ubuntu journey, it was very obvious to us that Ubuntu fits beautifully in place mm -hmm. with all of these concepts. And somebody asked, how does Ubuntu relate to gay people? And I just wanted to say that Ubuntu relates to every person. 
regardless of your color, creed, sexuality. Once we, once we recognize that we are all children of the universe, um, if you wanna have a broad picture of it, once we recognize that we're all genetically, biologically, physically, spiritually, cosmically related, um, you recognize that we, we have one global family which actually stretches out into the universe. And um, yes, there is prejudice on our planet. There's prejudice in America, there's prejudice in China, there's prejudice in Africa, you know? Um, but we are, humanity is still, I believe in its infancy. We've only just learned how to use electricity. We're just about to get electric cars, <laughs> you know? We're, we're, we're just learning a lot of things and we still have a lot more to learn. We're, we're just taking a deeper look into the universe for the first time. We're really getting beautiful images and seeing a lot of new things. We're on, we're on the verge of something very new. So, you know, we, we are very hopeful for a brighter future. We are confident in a brighter future. And it takes every person on this planet to, to become more self-forgetting and more all-embracing for us to really bring about change. And, and not so much that we are responsible for that change as much as being vessels for that change and allowing the spirit to work through us by becoming more and more transparent for us to be usable by spirit to bring about more love, more peace, more understanding, more justice and more progress on our planet. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. <laughs> Thank you. Let's just, let's just breathe that in for a minute because that there's so much you just shared, Pato, that's Thank you. Thank you. Um, Michael Beckwith, who's on the show sometimes, um, has a phrase, he'll come up on stage, he'll say, I've been well used by life today, <laughs> or God has used me well today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm thinking of that, and it's true. It's a good feeling when we've been used well mm -hmm. by higher yeah. self higher power Amen. and God is using you both very very well very he's, very well. he's an awesome um um guy and character as well too that we've been lucky to run into him just by accident you know remember we walked we was walking down the streets yeah. in the Merritt Park in LA and we're just minding our own business walking down the street during some reggae festival and there's Michael Beckwith walking down the street with his wife and we're in a conversation and we're talking and everything, and we're telling him about the Rancher book. And he tells us that he used to teach it in his living room. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Right. Yeah. The whole philosophy concepts and everything. And that's what's really fascinating and astounding because throughout this entire trip, besides Quadro, also like even how we initiated starting to do this documentary and have mm -hmm. some of the people that we're interviewing and, and are part of this documentary as well, too. So these concepts are, you know, Ubuntu. You know, the good news, the golden rule, Urantia, uh, all these things are all part of each other. They're all coinciding with each other and part of our this awakening world or this global tribe, you know, it's the same thing. Um, I want to read a couple of comments and then I actually have a couple of qu questions that have come in for you. Mm -hmm. um, but just um, uh, 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 Andrew and Connie, who, by the way, congratulations, Andrew and Connie are getting married on December 20th. So congratulations to you both. Congratulations. Um, Andrew writes, Pato and Antoinette are catalyzing the joy and the love of all creation and is awaiting us to release into the universe. Yes, Pato, this is Andrew continuing, or Connie, we are bringing something onto the planet that has never been here through the opening of the human heart and aligning with the love therein. Beautiful. Mark Danisovsky writes, I feel the love and understanding radiating off my computer monitor from Antoinette and Pato. Ubuntu is a frequency 
that we can all feel. The first indicator is their beautiful smile. Um, and uh, Dr. Laura, of course, in reference to what we spoke about a moment ago, writes, prejudice is ignorance. No question about it. It's just a limited worldview. Um, there's a question that came in actually from somebody on Facebook. I'm asking, um, and I see that you just put the link in, but go ahead. You've mentioned the Urantia book. For those who are not familiar with this very large book, it is epic. Um, uh, tell us, go ahead and tell us a little bit about the Urantia book. Go so ahead. the Urantia book is 2,097 pages. <laughs> that's broken into four parts, uh, basically talking about who God is and uh, who he is in the universe. It breaks down the whole hierarchy of the, the angels of, of the hierarchy of the universe, you know, all the roles that they play. It talks about the universes of universes, the seven super universes, all the different universes in between. It talks about the history of this planet, which they call it Urantia. It talks about the missing years of Jesus Christ, you know, from the time that he was in the universe before he actually became a man and then going back into the universe. And then it also talks about the other religions as well too, you know, Buddhism and Islam and Christianity and um, Taoism and different things, you know? So it's, it talks about uh, history and uh, it talks about evolution. It talks about science, it talks about cosmos. It talks about truth, beauty, and goodness, all the things that are true beauty and, and good to us. You and know? and, it, and if, I, if I was to sum, summarize it, mm -hmm. it basically says that the great challenge, the last page of this big book says, the great challenge to men and women is to develop a greater communication with the spirit that dwells within your mind. And that true religion is your personal experience with your with your god you're enjoying a gesture right oh. <laughs> with, 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 god. with god true religion okay. is your personal experience with your god beautiful i think i'm imagining most of the people watching this can relate very strongly to that thank you and i think that's also important too because you know like with a lot of people that we work with especially sitting in this room with all the people from unity earth from uh from the uri from from Unify, from all the different themes, even one from the very first parliament that we had done from before then, that was the thing about us is that we're not selling anybody anything. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's like at the Parliament of World's Religion, everybody who's been there knows that's like the Disney, the Comic Con, you know, the religious con of everybody's religion being sold out there. But it's like, hey, we're here for everybody. Everybody who's got a religion or don't have one, we're here for you. Yeah. Everybody is welcome with us with the Urantia book. Yeah. Everybody. We, we, we don't, we don't, there, there's no need to convert people to a book. A book is just a book. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And and if everyone's religion is personal, mm -hmm. you can't convert somebody to their own personal religion. Mm -hmm. All you can do is encourage everybody to continue to grow within their own faith. Mm -hmm. And what's that? What do you say? When you grow in your own faith, eventually you'll grow out of your faith. If, if, if you grow in your religion, eventually you will outgrow. Grow. You'll and outgrow it spiritual. and become spiritual. <laughs> and that's where all of us are going to meet out of our personal religions into the spiritual place where we can all Where there's no together. need for debating about what we believe truth will just become truth. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, well, tell us a little bit about what we're about to see next, the December 3rd trailer. So what are, what are we about to see next? All right. I think we was going to talk about how the project started. Or, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so um, basically, um, a good friend of ours um, who is responsible for um, the Charter of Compassion. He's a member of, he's, he's, yeah. he's on the board. He's a professor. His name is Guy Jameson. He also sits on the board of trustees for the Urantia Foundation. He... He's also trying to be very discreet and in the background, but I, I have to sing his praises because he's responsible for funding the documentary. And he was the one that came and told us that he had met um, Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu, and Desmond Tutu um, during a trip to, to South Africa mm -hmm. and that he learned about Ubuntu during that trip 
and it was his vision and dream to present Ubuntu to the world through a documentary, but he was waiting for the right people to travel across Africa to reach some of the dynamic people who are practicing Ubuntu in very unique ways. And he chose me and Antoinette, basically. And um, we were very honored um, and accepted immediately because it was something that we were also dreaming about doing, not about Ubuntu, but we wanted to travel across Africa just to spread the good news that we're all God's children, brothers and sisters, and just to meet um, different African people and learn more about the, the culture across Africa. So this was an ideal opportunity for us to go to 12 different countries and have all of our expenses covered and, and be also be in a position to also help people and make donations along the way, um, which was very, very beautiful. And so we learned about Ubuntu from God, educated ourselves. Um, God asked me to be the project coordinator. So I had to pull it all together. Antoinette became the travel coordinator and the interviewer of all the people that we met. And then God introduced us to the camera crew that we would be working with mm -hmm. in, Zim in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, once we met them online, I scheduled the phase one, phase two, and phase three over a three month period. And it had to be that way because we was already on an American tour and we had to fit the project around that tour. So we was working nonstop, touring America, touring Africa, flying back, touring America, flying back to Africa. This, this has been a very arduous task. And, and this was also during a time where Antoinette's cancer was at its peak where she should have really been resting. And I said to her, well, baby, you've got a choice. You can stay at home for three months and work on your health, or you can die on the road doing what you love to do. And she says, I'm gonna die on the road. <laughs> I'm not staying home and not going to Africa. I'm I'm promised. So I couldn't leave her at home, I tried. But she said she would rather die doing what she loves and being of service than staying at home being safe. And I agreed with her and we managed to do it. You know, we, we did the whole tiring project, but it was such an enjoyable, beautiful, inspiring, eye-opening, motivating journey. And um, what you're gonna see right now is just a small clip that could I and Answer put together as just a taster, just a taster. This is not from the documentary. Nothing you're seeing today is from the documentary. Some of it's just from our phones that we're sharing. Some of it's from the editors, um, the directors themselves. This next piece is from the director. So the quality is better than what you see from our phones. But this is just something they put together yesterday for this show, <laughs> just to give people a small taste of what's to come. All right, let's take a look, I'm excited.
Wow. <laughs> wow. What a great trailer. That's the first time that's been seen by the by anyone. I told you these guys are brilliant. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's like there's no way you could put all of that into this one little documentary. I'm telling you, they would have to do 12 or 20 or, or something everything we film. from everything that we filmed because we were filming. We were all filming nonstop. I mean, all of our cameras were out. All of our drones were out. All of our GoPros were I mean, everything. And there was so many stories to tell. You can't capture everything, you know. I'm going to read just some of the comments coming in. Um, that was fantastic. I cannot wait to see the entire film. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You guys really hit a lot of countries. Yes. This show keeps bringing me to tears. Wonderful tears. Big work. Um, I love African dance with the high energy and leg movement. Um, powerful, inspiring. Wow, 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 wow. Those are all <laughs> like eight different people that I just, get, you know. Uh huh. And, and wow. you can only imagine, um, you know, we faced a lot of challenges. You know, that's something that we we haven't really spoken about. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, the, we, I remember when we did phase one, mm -hmm. we were so exhausted, mm -hmm. and we had to go through the immigration challenges, mm -hmm. the customs and excise challenges, the challenges at the airports, the security checks, a lot of different things that we had to go through, plus um, rendezvousing with two people from Zimbabwe, making sure that they were taken care of throughout the trip and getting them home safely. And then when we got home for phase two, we realized that we didn't have our visas yet. <laughs> About five days before the trip, I, I looked at my passport and I saw like six pages. I thought I was fine. And Antoinette says, Pato, none of these pages are pages for your visa. They, they're just note pages. So I didn't have not even one page to put five visas in for the phase two trip. So we scrambled, scrambled and scrambled five days before phase two to go to five countries. And we managed to get every visa in time plus a new passport mm -hmm. expedited with this <laughs> i mean nobody's getting passports these days people people do not understand how difficult things are but one thing that the urantia book always says is that when you're doing god's will that the, the angels will move heaven and earth to make it happen you know so it's like no matter whatever we're doing it's like as long as it's, it's not anything that's selfish or personal uh -huh. or whatever it's whatever that we're doing for it doesn't matter what we're doing as long as it's in the, the line of God's will, things are going to happen. And if things were difficult, yeah. people do not understand. We've traveled the world. When you have an American passport, you can travel to the UK, to Japan, to anywhere without visas. In Africa, you have to have a visa in every single country, country. every single country. And in every single country, they you have to. The things that they, the groups that they make <laughs> you go all, through. A lot of them are trying to hustle the, the you. Hustling, <laughs> the hustling. The so, thing. So, the, so the, yeah. All of those things. And it's like, and it, and it was difficult, like I said, because here I am trying to travel and trying to maintain my health and trying to maintain my anxiety and my stress and being lifted, which I'm totally being lifted by the trip because it's Africa. I always feel alive when I go to Africa. That's the reason why my name is called Roots Data. Getting back to my roots. Anybody who knows anything about roots, seen roots and knows my story about roots and why my name is roots. It's all about my connection with Africa. And they just make it so hard and so difficult. But the even through all of that, mm -hmm. we still managed to have an amazing time. I will, I'm ready to go back again. <laughs> it's like that's our life now. It's like, but I wanted to say too, this this. Also, too, everything that you're seeing, it's not like all of your documentaries that you've seen about Africa. And that's one of the things that, that, that with these directors, because they shot a lot of stuff for UNICEF and all these different organizations. And the whole thing, when, when it comes to like, it, Ubuntu is not like just charity. You know, it's not another thing. If you give your two bucks a month or your 20 bucks a month, you know, you're going to feed this child, you know, for the whatever. It's not that. 
it's definitely not that. And and I know that's why people sit there and feel like when they look at Africa, they just sit there and think, oh, here's just another nation that we just had to keep giving money to, to keep them alive and those poor starving people and stuff like that. It is not what you think it is. It's going to be it's it's a lot of totally, people are very self-sufficient. It's exactly. And that's one of the things that what people don't understand about what Ubuntu really is. It's about how they're they're kind of working together and lifting each other up. It's not because I feel sorry for you, so I'm going to help you out. No, they've got bigger plans. They've got dreams. They've got aspirations. They've got. But it, but it also includes lifting someone up when 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 you're in a position to help someone who's less well off than you. So there there is some charity involved. There is mm -hmm. some giving mm -hmm. to the downtrodden, to the needy, you know. But there's also trying to help everyone to become self-sufficient mm -hmm. there's a spirit of cooperation yes there's also that you know the spirit <laughs> of cooperation where everybody because when when you're around people who want to see you succeed everybody wants to succeed when i'm in vegas and i'm playing roulette 23 I, if i don't win i want everybody to win as long as somebody's winning we all win you know it's, it's the, it, that's the kind of feeling for me yeah, <laughs> we just got to get the spirit of ubuntu when you win <laughs> you know, I, I, I want to acknowledge what I'm hearing you saying because there is a lot of built in prejudice, especially in white culture, that paints this picture of the poor, pathetic Africans who are less intelligent, less money, less, 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 less. And then the wonderful white people are going to be generous. And there is this incredible built-in prejudice that we've seen from so many movies and so many where even, you know, it's the, the great white Buana who comes in to help the poor little black people. Mm -hmm. And I just want to acknowledge that that's a really, I'm going to say it's a really fucked up prejudice that most of us have been raised with in 101 different ways. I mean, even Tarzan, King of the Jungle, is a white man, right? Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for educating us mm -hmm. about, hey, <laughs> think again. You know, mm -hmm. Africa is quadro. Africa is, the, you know, what we're seeing in your videos, that's Africa. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's beautiful and it just breaks my heart wide open in wonderful ways. You know, some of those buildings that you saw, you know, like some of the, the, the structures, some of the places that we visited that people would never actually believe that, you know, we've coming out of the pandemic and out of COVID and everything, the world has changed a lot. Africa, the amount of development, a, a few years ago, we went to Ethiopia with Kwajo, with Unity Earth, with, with a whole group of people. Connie and Andrew with, were there, evolutionary leaders were there. A lot of people have seen what we didn't see. If you see what's there now from just four years, it's completely different. So many of these countries, the development is happening. Like they got new science museums, they got new high-speed rails. There's things that we don't even have here in America that they've got over there. We don't have high-speed rails in America. We don't have 64% women in our Congress. We don't have you know, a cabinet full of women doing this or, or different stuff. So the rise of divine feminine is also happening in Africa too. So we're definitely going to be looking at the sleeping giant as she's awakening, as she's emerging, and as these great and beautiful things that are happening and coming from Africa that can really truly and shape the world. But we won't know until these act examples are being shown to the world, until we talk about it, until we share about it, and until we start removing the propaganda, the false propaganda and the false prejudices, you know, that people have about Africa and Africans and their contributions to humanity and to the rest of the world. You know, something you recently educated me on when we were talking a couple of weeks ago, Antoinette, was our Wanda. You know, when we think of our Wanda, we just picture, you know, slaughter and massacre and blacks versus blacks. And that's all we've been told. And then you were sharing with me what's really happening there now. And you showed me these amazing images of this incredible city and how the, I believe you said the parliament is almost all women, 
which when we all, I think most of us know now that we need the women to be leading, generally speaking. So tell us a little bit, because that was an education for me. Um, tell, tell our audience for a moment a little bit about Arwanda, and then we're going to get to some fundraising for you. Awesome. So I started interviewing. So I didn't believe that we were in Rwanda because all I kept thinking about was Hotel Rwanda and the Rwandan genocide and stuff. But when we got there, I said, this place is Black Beverly Hills. It looked like Black Laguna Beach. I'd never seen anything so gorgeous and so bougie, you know, in Africa. I mean, I've seen bougie in Africa, but it was just very different. And what I really liked about, um, what I liked about it, so I asked the woman, she was like the, 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 one of the women from the Bonvoy Marriott Hotels. She was one of the general managers. She says, we clean, women are so used to cleaning and after the, the genocide of Rwanda back in the 90s, it's like we had to clean the country. So when the president had filled up his cabinet with women, all these women had decided this is what we need to do here. We need to start cleaning up the, the land in the country, like with the littering. We could not, me and the guys walked around for like three days looking for garbage, a cigarette butt. I mean, you can't even walk outside here in California and not find some type of garbage. The litter is out of control not just in Africa, but in America and in India, in Africa and in Mexico, doesn't matter where you are, there's always going to be litter. But you don't see any litter in Rwanda because it's against the law. They told them, they said the changes were uncomfortable, but it was necessary that they had to be made. So cleaning up, farming, utilizing the land, they said, you know, we, we have to utilize this land. Everybody can grow. We have to sit there and substantiate how these people can sit there and substantiate their food, their income, all the different ideas that these women are coming up with in order to sit there and help us sustain the people. You know, the safety. This is a place that a woman can go and travel alone and be safe because everybody's looking out for each other. And the way that they have set up their laws, it's, it's amazing, it's beautiful. So that's now our new thing me and Jane are doing. It's like going into Rwanda, going into Uganda and staying in Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful and anybody else who wants to go on this trip with us is always welcome to join us <laughs> i would love to go with you on one of your trips to africa i've been fantasizing about that all night long it's like oh please take me please take me please take me sometime because uh, i have not been to africa um all right let's you know i can see everybody's very enthusiastic about what you're doing we were blown away by the trailer and hey, it takes money to do all of this. And so, of course, we're dedicating tonight's fundraising to supporting Pato and Antoinette. And um, I'm gonna go briefly to uh, the Jane campaign. And uh, always when I see this image, this photograph, I'm gonna read it. It's a sign that is being carried. It says, my son is big, black and autistic. He does not respond to verbal commands. Please don't shoot him. Scroll down some more. Yeah, you can see another picture of him now. This is him now. But when we first met him, he was only like four or five years old. But he's bigger now. And this is what launched the Jane campaign. Um, of course, you've talked about it on the show before. But for people who don't know about it, Tell them a little bit about this very important project that you're so involved in. All right. So basically, after the George Floyd riots, and basically when you first had me on the show, <laughs> this right. is what I mean you started our relationship. Uh, we had first we had done a protest in the city of Lake Elsinore. Uh, we didn't actually do the protest. We were we were we we were asked to lead it after we were trying to ensure the community that no violence was going to happen. We're like, there's not gonna be any rioting or looting within our city because we live here. But we end up actually leading the protest. And then after that, the police asked if they can march with us, you know, for the next protest because they saw that there was nothing, you know, bad that was gonna happen. And we actually needed the police because there were people who are actually threatening to harm us, even though we were just having a protest, you know, for Black Lives Matter. After that event, me and the Lieutenant developed a relationship to where I said, listen, there's an issue because my friend Jane, she had moved all the way to Lake Elsinore from Long Beach because she wanted to be close to us. This is the part of the part of the spirit of Ubuntu. It takes a village to raise a family. She's a single mom of an autistic child. 
And anytime the police get called or something, you know, she's really without any help or support. And they had already just murdered and killed an, an adult autistic man and shot both the parents not too long ago, not too far from us. So I said, what can we do to sit there and like ensure that this won't happen again? I started developing this conversation with the Lieutenant over at the Riverside County um, Sheriff's Department and initiated the Jane campaign, which started with additional registry and also the blue envelope. Two years later, after going back and forth in my lobbying team and all my different things that we were doing, they actually did institute the two policies, but we still have to work together to sit there and like get it out there and to get the right representation. We have so much work to do because you know we're talking about dealing with the police and government institutions. Anyway, to make a long story short, we are getting into those things for next year, which we have a lot of that to do for MLK, which was part of the Jane campaign. But Jane is also in one of these videos. She's also in the documentary because Jane turns out as we are digging through all this stuff and we are supporting one of the organizations, she's from Rwanda. So she was going back over there, finding out who her family was because there's a lot of stuff that happened during the genocide and why she got adopted. And she was adopted by one of these organizations um, like uh, the, the Grace Villa that we're about to see and everything. So she is, and we've been helping this place, but that story is now taking another story into the Jane campaign, to the work that's being done here in America, also to the work that's being done in Africa. Beautiful. So um, I just put the link into the chat box, but for those watching on Facebook, um, it's um, standupforjustice.us standupforjustice.us mm -hmm. forward slash Jane campaign. Or if you're just on the Stand Up For Justice site, which is right here, um, this is the main site, standupforjustice.us, and then click donate. And um, I wanna really encourage everyone watching now to do that. Please go to standupforjustice.us and donate. I'm going to do it right now, and and Antoinette knows when she's on the show. I always, I always donate, um, and I'm going to log into my PayPal and um, make a donation. And I really want to encourage everyone to please, please do the same. Everyone, please, um, let's donate. Let's support this amazing work that they're doing. Um, I always like to give seventy-seven, seventy-seven, um, and let's all donate, everybody. This is really important work. Um, um, and I'm just gonna say this is for Ubuntu. Am I pronouncing it correctly? I hope so. Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. It's such a beautiful word, such a beautiful word. So everybody, let's all do that. And while you're donating and while you're all following my lead, hopefully, our mm -hmm. beloved brother Omashar has been here all along um, and he's gonna play some music. Omashar, before you play, what stands out for you from this show so far tonight? I'm just humbled with the power of you two, Pato and Antoinette. You know, your, your love is so palpable, it's contagious. Just, just sitting here and basking in your presence and seeing some of the amazing travels that you've gone through and what you've just collected in your wake, because, you know, you are both goddess, God in action. And uh, <clears throat> it's funny because uh, something that Michael Beckwith said, really helped me. He was talking about electricity and without a light bulb, how can the electricity express itself? And I realized that I'm a light bulb and it's, uh, it's you know, you just take away the mask of me uh -huh. and, uh, and allow the truth of myself, ourselves to flow through. And here it is. And so I, I'm going to sing a song that I wrote a couple of weeks ago. And um, let's just um, get down to that and put a little a nice little background on me. I like that background. I know, right? Yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
It's all twinkle. <laughs> I love that song. It's our new theme song. It is I very different. Our theme song. I love it. Oh my God! Are you here in Cali with us? I'm currently in Colorado, but I'm a fluid being. I've been around the world like you have, and so all travel right. is nothing. Missed you in Colorado, dude. We're gonna do a remix of that too. We're gonna do an African remix of that. I, I would that love song. that. Oh, oh my God, totally that would be amazing. All right, yeah. me and you, Omashar, me and you. I would love it, Angela. <laughs> really, yeah. truly. All right, Pops, you could be a part of it too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Pops, you could be a part of it, but I love you that. You can. I know uh -huh. it's great chord structures. You know how songs sometimes just come. They did not take no effort. They just get birthed. This is what this is one of those. So, yeah. I just I just wanted to say, Scott, it's just nice to see all of these beautiful faces in the Zoom call. 
you know, I, I've seen many of these faces on the call supporting the show, supporting us. And I, I just I just want to send much love to everybody that's that's here with us right now. Thank you all for joining us. Thank mm -hmm. you. I'm gonna go to gallery view. Turn on your cameras, people. Look at these beautiful folks, yeah. And I love watching them dance and yeah, move to the music. You know, it's it's just beautiful, isn't it? And we love all of you who don't have your cameras on as well. And we love all of you that are on Facebook who we can't see either. But um, yeah. gratitude and love for everybody who's watching. And, and, you know, we can all just feel the spirit of Ubuntu. You know, we can feel it. It's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, before the sex video, I actually want to share a little story that's kind of interesting. Um, I, when I'm driving, I listen to Audible, and I always am listening to somebody's autobiography. Um, and over the last few years, I've listened to Elton John, um, uh, Phil Jackson, my favorite coach, Steve Young, my favorite football player. I just finished Jane Fonda, who I worked with for 11 years. And I always find it fascinating to be listening to the stories of these people and it's their autobiography. Usually they're reading their own autobiography. And as fate would have it, um, I've been listening to, and I'm almost done with it now, a 19 hour autobiography by Michelle Obama. And she's a wonderful writer and a wonderful speaker. Um, and the way she tells her story, she's always telling it from the point of view of her age as it's happening. Now, of course, we know as we're, as we're listening, she's gonna become you know, the, the first lady of the United States, but you're hearing her story as, as a little kid growing up in the South side of Chicago and then being you know, all that her parents did to help her to succeed and all the sacrifices they made. And, and she has no clue you know, that she's gonna have this thing, uh -huh. no clue at all. She's just a hardworking, you know, person who's really trying to fulfill um, the support that her parents are giving her. Her father had multiple sclerosis and literally worked until he died to support his family. Um, her mother was a stay-at-home mom, um, taking good care of her and her brother and sewing all of their clothes and the whole thing. And even, and she's very smart. She's extremely well-educated. She ended up going to Princeton and then Harvard Law, but even as she's running nonprofit organizations and working, you know, in a high-powered lawyer, you know, she has no idea she's going to become first lady. And it's really interesting hearing her reality in, you know, at those times, having no idea, and it happened so fast. You know, I mean, in a, in a period of six years, he went from being, you know, a state senator. To president of the United States. It happened very, very, very fast. And, um, and I've been listening to that whole story and I just drove back from Sedona. So I've had lots of time to listen to it. So I've been especially intrigued and reacquainted with the, the incredible story of Michelle and Barack Obama. And that's my lead in to um, a very brief um, little two minute video of Barack Obama, my favorite president of all time, um, speaking about tonight's topic, uh, the spirit of Ubuntu. And finally, Mandela understood the ties that bind the human spirit. There's a word in South Africa, Ubuntu. A word that captures Mandela's greatest gift, his recognition that we are all bound together in ways that are invisible to the eye, that there's a oneness to humanity, that we achieve ourselves by sharing ourselves with others and caring for those around us. We can never know how much of this sense was innate in him or how much was shaped in a dark and solitary cell. But we remember the gestures, large and small, 
introducing his jailers as honored guests at his inauguration, taking a pitch in a Springbok uniform, turning his family's heartbreak into a call to confront HIV AIDS that revealed the depths of his empathy and his understanding. He not only embodied Ubuntu, he taught millions to find that truth within themselves. It took a man like Madiba to free not just the prisoner, but the jailer as well. To show that you must trust others so that they may trust you. To teach that reconciliation is not a matter of ignoring a cruel past, but a means of confronting it with inclusion and generosity and truth. He changed laws, but he also changed hearts. Wow. Bringing up Pacho and Antoinette, I'm bringing you back on. And... Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And thank you, because it's your commitment to bringing the spirit of Ubuntu to America, to our world, educating us that I did not know this word a month ago, yeah. you know, and I'm sure I, I see some of our people did know it and some of our people didn't know it. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for bringing this powerful word and of course the vision that the word conjures yeah. um to us thank you yeah. i think this word is going to become like um you know we want to make it like a household word you know so <laughs> it's like if you know same thing like how uh, when when they made us ambassadors of the golden rule when moosey did that it's like we wanted to make the golden rule like a household word and it was amazing that when we kept going around to all these different places and we asked people if they knew what the golden rule was, how many people actually don't know what the golden rule is? So you do have to go out there and explain it to people, you know, but when you explain it to people, it's something that everybody can get down with and everybody can accept. And it was the same thing that we were sitting here talking about the good news and the same thing with Ubuntu. So it's like, if, well, if we can't make everybody believe in one thing or another that might offend you know, their, their diverseness or their, their, their personalities or their cultures or their race or whatever. What is the one thing that everybody can just jump on? The golden rule, the good news, Ubuntu, you know, so Ubuntu is very simple. It's very easy. And they do have different names for it in other cultures. It's not like it's an only an African thing. You know, we, we see the Hawaiians have a, a term for it, you know, in different cultures in Latin America or different places. Everybody has a certain term for it, which basically for me, I always think of it, it takes a village to raise a family. You know, we can't do anything without anybody else. And I don't know why people have this mentality that I got here by myself. You know, I got here, nobody else helped me, or I did this all by myself. I big worked so hard and it's like, wait a minute. It's like, it, nothing ever comes about that way. And for anybody to sit there and think that it's like, they're, they're, they're kidding themselves. Even yeah. any more corporation or any entrepreneur, there's still a whole heap of people underneath it, you know, mm -hmm. that got them there and did that. So the sooner we can get everybody changing their mind and changing the way of thinking, the sooner we're going to start having some peace in our lifetime, some equity, some equality, some fairness, some love, some compassion, you know, just better. Beautiful. My God. Once again, let's just breathe that in. <sighs> Thank you, Antoinette. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. All right. Next on our agenda is Ubuntu Reflections. Uh, so do you want to introduce this video? Yes. So um, this one is after the first phase. Uh, I had this idea. I said, we should, I said, I want to go Facebook Live. You know, I used to love going Facebook Live all the time before I got my diagnosis. It's like, because it's, Everybody's just starting to tune in. It's like, yeah, we're live here in Africa. We got some Wi-Fi because that's the other thing. It's like getting Wi-Fi at a certain time is not always easy, but we got out there and it was after we finished our first phase. So we were sitting out there and it was a beautiful location and we were just totally amazed by what we saw in a Burundi 
and um, the whole trip, the whole trip, uh-huh. the whole, whole, whole trip. So we sat out there and just kind of gave a quick reflection about, you know, what we saw in the first few countries. Father? Yeah. And basically you'll, you'll get a chance right now to meet the team, the, yes. the Ubuntu team. Okay, here we go. All right. Well, greetings, everyone. Um, this is Pato Banton along with the Ubuntu team. We have Ansa, yeah. Antoinette Roots Data, Pato Banton, and Kudzai. So um, we're just going to do a quick recap of phase one to just talk about how we felt about this journey and any highlights. And I, I want to start with my brother, Ansa. Right. Well, um, our journey started in um, Kenya. We went to Kenya. We went to some places in Kenya. It was really amazing. Um, the hospitality there, the people, the culture. It was just a good, good, good experience. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for your coffee. My coffee, that's classic. <laughs> Continue. Look forward to doing a lot mm-hmm. for humanity. Yes. Thank you. Uh, before perhaps you go, the one thing we believe in in Lapid Leaders Africa is write your vision in big letters. Yes. Mm-hmm. Even though it may tally, it shall surely come to pass. May you write down your vision and may your stories be read all over the world. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Um, and then we moved on to Uganda. We went to Uganda, and they, we actually went to a church. Uh, luckily, it was Sunday. It was really amazing. Every, everyone, the church, and even part of even gave um, uh, a word. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that it was, was awesome. It was really amazing, and he performed uh, two of his songs there. It was really, really good. And then we moved on to Rwanda. We went to the school. Uh, the kids who were there, were there were so amazing, so beautiful. I really, I was really inspired by what was happening right there. And then lastly, we are here in um, Burundi. Burundi. Yo, we just went to this place. Uh, <laughs> the palace. It's a palace. It was really, really looking good. The people there, they were happy. I like the fact that the community, they worked... What was the name of it? Together. Village Health Works. Village yeah, Health yeah. Works. Yeah, yeah, Village Health Works. It, uh, the community, <coughs> the way they worked together to build that place, it was really fascinating. I really didn't expect it when I got in Burundi. I had different expectations. <laughs> but when I got there, I was amazed what they are building right there. That's the biggest thing I've ever seen from all the countries we have actually visited. I really enjoyed this trip. Mm-hmm. I'm passing to you, Internet. All right. Awesome. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to pick, like, one favorite because, mm-hmm. um, as you said, you know, that everything was so spectacular. Mm-hmm. When we got to Kenya, uh, you know, with the, with the first school, but by the time we took that road to Katui County, that four-hour drive to the village, <laughs> and when the whole village came out, I mean, we're talking hundreds yeah, of people, yeah, the yeah, dancing and yeah. the, the ceremony and, and everything else is, is a welcome home party. All right, man. And, when, and I think one of the, the things I really loved about this whole journey, too, is the women that I've been meeting. Yeah, 
The women in Kenya, the women in Uganda, the women leading the organizations, mm -hmm. you know, from, from the smallest organization to the largest organization and where we ended up here in Burundi. I've got to say, Burundi really threw me by surprise too because I was not expecting what he just said. It's a palace. This is, I mean, when we're talking about like health works, about a community that's like building together, coming together, I mean, they built everything together from scratch. The hospital, the school, the dormitories, the, the housing, the dwellings. The dwellings are even nicer than this hotel we're staying in. That place is just so fantastic. It's probably one of my favorite places. And definitely um, the village out there with um, Lillian is one of my favorite places, too. I would come back out there. If I were to have a funeral, those guys are going to carry me. <laughs> I want those guys at my, my going away party and stuff. But... But Ubuntu phase one part of documentary, I mean, trust me, guys, when you watch this and you see this, you're going to feel like you're right here in the experience with the rest of us. This place is amazing. You will always have family. They're welcoming everybody, no matter your color, your class, your creed, your race, your gender. Th these people are very loving and very welcoming. Thank you, Antoinette. Good day. Um, thank you very much, Pato. Well, um, well... If I if I'm to choose where to be born again, if I would get another chance to be born, born again, again, I would be born in Africa. Yes, <laughs> Africa is a beautiful place. <laughs> um, you know, there's a perception that you get when you go to the internet to look for some of those countries in Africa, but the moment you step off your feet in Benin, Rwanda, Burundi, it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. This continent is beautiful, full of beautiful people, smiling, happy people welcoming and the stories that we got in the field were so life-changing mm -hmm. sometimes we'll be just holding the camera and smiling at the same time mm -hmm. you know because the stories are so powerful uh and so life-changing <laughs> The smiles that you'd get from people who are receiving little help so much genuine smiles so much happy smiles and I think um, as Africans and as, as black Africans we have a lot of work to do to showcase uh, the potential of our own continent here in Africa thank you Pastor. thank you Kudzai yeah. um, I, I just want to second what everyone here has said I have so many thoughts so many reflections but the documentary will show our, our journey and our experience. I want to say thank you so much to Esther from the Lapid Leaders. Lapid Leaders. I want to say uh -huh. thank you to her mother, Mary, from yeah. St. John's School. St. John's yeah. Academy. Mm -hmm. We want to say thank you to Pastor Bishop mm -hmm. from the Urantia Church mm -hmm. in um, Uganda. Mm -hmm. thank, in thank you to Samuel, Gangster Samuel, mm -hmm. <laughs> all the way in Ginger too. We mm -hmm. want to say thank you to our sister Alpha. Mm -hmm. um, Discovery School. Discovery International School. International School. International. Um, for a great experience with you and the children. Um, thank you to Deo, who blew our mind. He's a genius. In Burundi. <laughs> village Health Works is a beautiful complex, of, uh, is a village of itself. And the hospital and the school and, and the accommodations. 
Everything there is so dynamic. We, we will be coming back to Burundi to visit our awesome family here. So thank you again to Kudzai to Antoinette, thank you again, to my brother Ansa, um, we have a, this team is amazing, I'm so comfortable um, with this team that we have, everyone has a great responsibility, we all know our different roles, we work together very well, and phase one to me has been a blessing, it's been very successful, you know, the only issues we had was at the airport in Burundi. <laughs> um, that's, another, that's another story. <laughs> but apart from that, we love Burundi. Burundi mm -hmm. is a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. um, they just need to step up with their progress. But they will get there eventually. They have the resources. Mm -hmm. So only, all they need now is some time. True. So the spirit of Ubuntu is alive in Africa. We have witnessed it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And during phase two and phase three, we will continue to eight more African countries to document the spirit of Ubuntu. Until then, peace. Ubuntu! Ubuntu! Ubuntu. <laughs> uh, yeah, so <laughs> if we organize an Ubuntu trip, you're signing up. All right, I am organizing Ubuntu trips to Africa. You know, in fact, after that time, because that was the other thing that that I, I um it, this is our first documentary on Ubuntu, but I know a lot of people shoot a lot of documentaries. But for us personally, because of who we are, it's not like we can just go and meet somebody and then that's it. And it's like bye, we're done, you know, or, you know, move on to somebody else or something. Every every person that we meet becomes people, family within our life, you know. When we saw Quadro again on this Ubuntu trip, we didn't see him during the pandemic. But from the first time that we met him from Facebook, he's been our family ever since. And so that's the same thing with the, the people, why, you know, we're continuing our work. It wasn't just to shoot the documentary, but it was also to show our ongoing commitment, you know, to help continue our work with them and also new, new people who are also trying to learn the Ubuntu way of doing things. So, and like I said, I've been amazed because I can actually see, you know, what you've done with the retreat in Sedona, what we are planning to do with Edentia, which will be another show. We'll come back onto your show and tell you all about what we're going to do with our 31 acres of land in Southern California, Edentia. And I'm telling you, I got so inspired by everything that we saw in Africa and by the way that they were doing things. It made me see and understand we can do the same thing here. That hospital that you just saw, those people built that. You know, when you see the marble, the village and the people coming together, they didn't all know how to do it. You know, they had to bring in like somebody and they made some mistakes along the way. Remember, because they got to knock out some walls because they did some things. But it was just like the whole spirit of cooperation of everybody coming together to sit there and build that. When you see this place, the whole property, like all the buildings, the structures, the plants, the, the food. Everything is done by everybody in the community. That is really amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. When I, when I was in uh, Sedona, I was, one of my things that I was doing there after my retreat was I was hosting and moderating films for the Illuminate Film Festival. And the film that actually won the audience award was called Ama's Way. And it was all about um, the people in India and what they've created around Amachi the hugging saint. Um, same thing you're talking about. They've created huge universities, hospitals. Mm -hmm. They're providing six to 10,000 meals a day, free of charge. 6,000, and AMA serves it. They've got this whole assembly line. And so everybody gets a blast, 6,000 meals. Hand it to her, and she's like, hand it, you know, <laughs> their own personally blessed yes, by yes. meal every day right oh. it's incredible what people can do when, when they 
when they come together with with people like yourselves leading the way, providing the inspiration, providing the um, the goal. Look at, I mean, right now, everybody wants to go to Africa with you. Mm -hmm. That's we want to go and do a concert. That's why we told them we were coming because we want to do a concert because his place is, it's way out there in the sticks and boondocks. When I tell you it's way out there in the sticks and boondocks. And he said that he was building this hospital and they wanted him to build that hospital in the city. He said, no, you guys are going to have to come where these people are and build a road and, build a road and get there. If you want the first state of the art hospital that's going to do its first autopsy, you're going to have to come here and get it. <laughs> so that's why they're building this road down there. And this pavilion, he made it for women. The, the way that it's shaped, it was the two hearts coming together as one. The whole design and the concept and everything. He said, these women need dignity get them out of these tents. And I was like, oh my gosh, this place is nicer. It doesn't matter if you're the gardener, if you're the doctor, you're getting the same beautiful accommodations, you know, <laughs> the same. Everybody is getting the same equal love and treatment, no matter what your skill set level or anything and the way they're treated. I'm like, this is a philosophy that everybody should be learning. That's right. That's right. Well, um, again, I want to encourage if people who haven't put in money yet, please do so. And our last video of the evening, uh, introduce this to us. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to see. A welcoming party for Pato and Antoinette. Tell us about this. All right. So this was this was really fascinating, too, because like I said, this the story of the Jane campaign, as I'm doing our social justice work here in America, took a whole nother level when we told her that we were going to Uganda and, and uh, it was a few years ago that we were supporting this particular orphanage. And the way that it is, is that these girls are at risk girls. There's a huge problem for girls in Africa. And young, this is young girls. young girls, you know, they don't have the same protections. And when it comes to certain things, like whether it's rape or incest or, or certain sexual abuse certain. or certain se sexual things that's, you know, atrocities that are done to girls, it's always put the blame is on the girls. And then when that happens, they become outcasts of society. So that's the reason why I really love Lillian, because she understood she'd been through that. And she understands what it means to sit there and take another girl that nobody else is thinking about or caring about. When you invest in these girls, what I love about this place is that these girls become somebody. They know that they are somebody. They're not just another mouth to feed, but they're someone that can contribute to, to life and to humanity. And when they're able to grow with that kind of love and compassion, they become great citizens of the world. And these same women are the ones that are leading Africa. And that's why I sit there and say, let's build and invest in these girls and give them the kind of love and compassion, know that they can be something and do something. So when we actually got there, we did not know that they had this all this plan. And so they, they stopped us. We're like, okay, so we're here. And they planned this welcome party for and, us. And the beauty of this is that um, Jane, mm -hmm. we, we live in a, a town called Lake Elsinore in California. Mm -hmm. And Jane moved out here so she could be closer to us. Because it takes a village to raise a family. <laughs> so we could help her with her autistic son. Mm -hmm. And she traced her roots back to Uganda and Rwanda. And, her and so once we started time. the Ubuntu journey, she said she wanted to come and join us on the trip once we got to um, Rwanda and Uganda. So we, we organized her trip, her flights and her hotel. We met her in Uganda and we traveled in a saf safari mm -hmm. truck. Across from Rwanda, from Rwanda into Uganda. Across, across the border from Rwanda into Uganda. And stayed in Wakanda. <laughs> we stayed at the Wakanda Hotel. Yeah. And um, she came with us to this Grace Villa. Um, she was the one that actually introduced us to them originally. Mm -hmm. So it was like a homecoming for her too. Mm -hmm. And um, and when we got there, we did not know what to expect. So what everyone is going to see is the, the welcoming party once we arrived at Grace Villa. And also when we took this drive, because, that, you know, you, if you guys are following me on Facebook, I have this whole album on the Ubuntu documentary where I'm dropping all these all these behind the scenes and clips. But we're driving for hours. That was the road that her mother walked down for hours, for days, for days 
pregnant with her mother to escape, to escape out of, and this is from in the 60s, from the, the genocide from back then, from the war back then. So we're still discovering her story. We're going to be unfolding it and unraveling it as we continue and stuff. So check it out. All right, here we go. So say the name of the hill. Makanga, Makanga Hill. <laughs> back over there like i said you know anybody who wants to come with us on the rwanda uganda wakanda excursion 
you know, <laughs> we're going to do that. That was a lot when of fun. do you think that'll be? Do you have a sense of when that'll actually be? Yeah. Um, so what we're hoping to do, so the, 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 the documentary, what their plan is, they wanted to air it at the Parliament of World's Religion. So we're waiting to hear about, about that. And also that should be the time when the hospital should be finished. It'll be for, fall of next year. Around the fall. Uh -huh. That'll give people time to save money. You know, we'll set up an event, right? They can mm -hmm. start saving money. They can start making their down payments and everything. Yeah. And like I said, you know, Rwanda is very safe flying into, uh, going into Uganda was easy peasy, yeah. you know, and uh, where we stayed in Wakanda. When I say that we stayed in Wakanda, we really did stay in Wakanda because it it turns out right around the corner from Gates Villa is where they shot the movie, the Black Panther, you know, that whole thing where it looks like Hobbit world and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So it's so beautiful. So and it's beautiful. it's right there. Wow. Uganda, Uganda and Rwanda. <laughs> wow. Well, I let's do it. Global Peace Tribe is going to Africa with Pato and Antoinette in the fall. All absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I'm committing to that. Um, and I want to thank um the people. We're gonna wrap up in a moment, but I want to thank the people who donated. Um, this may not be everyone, but I see, thank you, Mark Denisovsky, Christine Tulk, Donna Martine, Janet Catalina, beloved brother, wild monk, Jerry Anderson, um, the Spirit at Work Sanctuary, and anyone else who's donated that we didn't get that name yet, because yeah. it takes a little bit for it to come through. Thank you so much. Please continue to donate. I have put it into the chat box a few times. And I also want to ask for us to take a moment and for us to pray and send our blessings to Pato and especially Antoinette, who has got this healing journey that she's on. So let's all just in our hearts, maximum grace for Pato and Antoinette and the spirit of Ubuntu. Maximum grace. Pato and Antoinette and the spirit of Ubuntu. Maximum grace for Pato and Antoinette and the spirit of Ubuntu. And there are your, some of your Global Peace Tribe friends sending you love, blessings, appreciations. We love you and respect you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you thank you Scott. this thank was a you. great great and trust me this, this um your donations are not wasted they are going to the um to help people and one of the things that i really love about grace as well too you, those t-shirts those those hoodies those kids make those the kids make their clothes the kids, you know, they 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 they've got their business going and stuff like that. It's very beautiful. All right. Well, we're going to close as always with an Omushar song. Um, I do want to remind people that tomorrow is going to be a really beautiful Sacred Sunday show. Um, Deborah Juicy is coming back on. You know, once every three months or so, she co-hosts with me, and of course, she's going to co-host because it's going to be the Twin Ray with us live. And boy, what! What a weekend of beautiful, inspirational couples. John and Summer last night, Pato and Antoinette tonight, and tomorrow, the Twin Ray. So definitely join us. That's tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, and, uh, uh, and always keep an eye out, you know, um, all of you that have registered, you're on our email list. Um, so on Mondays, we send out the email. And... Um, uh, Keep an eye out because you'll get the replay for tonight's show. You're going to want to share it out. Let's really share the replay of tonight's show out to our friends and family so that more and more people are aware of this incredible documentary, the incredible work that Pato and Antoinette are doing. And I see several of you are going to start going to their Wednesday night Urantia book class. So that's very, very cool. It's um, so fun. <laughs> Yeah, that and what time is that on Wednesday nights? 6 p.m. PST. 6 p.m. Pacific time. time. Wednesday at 6 p.m. Sundays at 10 a.m. I'm telling you, when you get a, a pato breakdown, the whole universe just opens up. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. And how long is the class on Wednesday nights? 
two, two hours. hours. <laughs> two hours, six till eight. Okay, good to know. And it's not and a class. It's an interactive session. You know, everybody okay. has to participate. It's an interactive study. So it's like a study group, like a study yeah. group. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, please put the link to it back in again. Karen's I asking. Put that back that. In, yeah. And I will turn it over to beloved brother Omoshar. Well, what a blessing, um, Pato and Antoinette. Uh, and that last video, I was just, as I saw in the chat, just brought me to tears because we don't realize there's so much life happening that we're unaware of. And, and, and thank you for um, uh, educating me. Um, I, I don't have any words. I'm speechless. It's, it's beautiful. I just feel more whole at, after having witnessed this evening that we all shared. And so let's um, um, do something here and get all funky and get trippy here. There we go. And up here. Yeah. 
when I face what life a promise to fulfill now a vision is revealed and still we wonder Wow. Wow. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, beloved brother Omoshar. Mm -hmm. Remember, everybody, we can get his stuff by going to omoshar.com uh, and to omoshar.bandcamp.com. That's where we can get all things Omoshar. Thank you, brother. See you tomorrow morning. My pleasure. Thank you. Are we doing Sri and Kara in the morning? Do I'm we not too sure. Apparently, we are appearing uh, via Ecuador um, at um, 10 o'clock um, Pacific time. With Shri and Kira, I have yet to... Nine o'clock. Um, nine o'clock Pacific time. Oh, nine o'clock. Excuse me. That's right. <clears throat> I'm... Pacific time, time Shri and Kira. <laughs> 10 o'clock Sacred Sunday show. Or at 10 o'clock, you can also do Pato and Antoinette's study group. So always lots of things happening. Yes. <sighs> Much love to all of you. I'm going to go to gallery view one last time, everybody. So smile. And there you are. Thank you, Scott. Thank oh, you. Pato, Antoinette, thank you for such a beautiful, beautiful show. Beautiful night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Whatever thank you, night. everyone. We love you guys. Good night, everybody. <laughs> See thank you tomorrow. Much, Bye. Thanks, Omashar. Let's make that remix. Please. <laughs> I'd love to. Yes. Afrobeat Awakening World song. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Thank awesome. you.